Hello everyone, with the Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video on the weather across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. It is Monday evening, November 24, 2025. Now before we jump into it, please ensure that you all like this video. I'd really appreciate it if you all get this video to 100 likes. If you don't know by now, that's how the YouTube algorithm works. We all like the video and then the YouTube algorithm push the video out to more persons who are in the path of these tropical systems so that we can keep everyone safe, especially during the peak months of Atlantic hurricane season that's August through to October. Share this video with your friends, your co-workers, your relatives, and even your church brethren and subscribe if you haven't yet done so. Please ensure that you will utilize the progress bar that's located at the bottom of the video as well as the timestamps that are located not only in the comment section but the video description so that you can skip to the points in the video that you want to see the most in order to save time because we know that the videos over here with the Jamaica can be very long. Leave a comment down below letting me know what that has been like in your year recently. Also feel free to ask any weather related question that you might have about the future of the weather in your specific area. The U.S. National Hurricane Center's seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook that just came out at 6.34 p.m. Jamaica time shows that tropical cyclone activity is not expected during the next seven days. And this is the reason why nothing here across the Atlantic that is trying to acquire the next name on the list, which is Nestor. The surface map of the Atlantic shows a frontal system across the northern portion of North Atlantic extending into Florida. We also see a trough extending from the northern portion of North Atlantic extending down to the northern portions of the main development region. And another trough right here across the Cabo Verde Islands. If we take a look at the visible satellite images of the Atlantic before we lost the sunlight, we can definitely make out the clouds associated with that frontal system extending into Florida. The clouds associated with that other trough right here extending from the northern portion of the Atlantic all the way down and the clouds associated with the trough that's now affecting portions of the Cabo Verde Islands. Taking a look at what was predicted in yesterday's video about what the weather would have been like across Jamaica for today, it was stated that we would have gotten some rainfall across northeastern parishes in Jamaica, also affecting sections of some southern and western parishes during Monday afternoon. You know, northeastern parishes were talking about St. Anne, St. Mary, Portland. Southern parishes were talking about Westmoreland, St. Elizabeth, Manchester, Clarendon, St. Catherine, Kingston, St. Andrew, and St. Thomas. Western parishes, you know, we're talking about those parishes in the county of Cornwall, like Hanover, St. James, Trelawney, Westmoreland, and St. Elizabeth. And what ended up happening? Although no post was made on our social media platforms today, we definitely saw the visible satellite images though. And we were definitely getting on some cloud cover, if not some isolated shores on the north coast. Also affecting section of some southern parishes, Westmoreland, St. Elizabeth, Manchester, Clarendon, section of St. Catherine. Definitely gotten on some overcast skies, if not some isolated shower activity. Nothing do have deep conviction or anything like that though. We don't see any blues, greens, yellows, oranges and reds. That represents cumulonimbus nimbus clouds, not to mention any upper level wind shear blowing cloud tops off towards the northeast. The live camera from C Jamaica's YouTube channel even shows that the Flatbridge era was calm today. Real Cobra chilling, people in their vehicles going about their business in the very sunny weather. This was at about 3.33 p.m. here, all courtesy of the C Jamaica camera right over here. So please ensure that you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out. Even the total accumulated precipitation for the past 24 hours is confirming the light rainfall that took place across the northeast and the southern parishes today nothing significant no crazy greens yellows oranges anything like that at all regarding what's taking place right now the latest still image here from the weather nurse website so we're reloading this you want to see exactly what's taking place now Later, still images showing 0035 UTC, which is actually 735. We still see some milky whitish shades representing some low to middle of the clouds. Nothing significant though. And regarding what's underneath these clouds, we can see that because the Jamaican Doppler radar is still down. The Cuban Doppler radar glitched out at around 2 what time about 2 20 p.m at that time we had some isolated shores affecting northern jamaica today we see the rain pushing into portland section of Trelawney into hanover for sure to confirm that the north coast was definitely getting on some amount of rainfall however the latest um doppler radar imagery here the guantanamo bay u.s navy radar let us see what is the latest we're seeing that we have some rainfall into portland but what's happening right here right now the latest is showing 0027 which is actually 727 at that time as you can see nothing taking place across the island some isolated shores just to the southwest of the western peninsula of haiti though the cayman radar still down so boy we have to be we have to be dependent on just the visible and the infrared satellite imagery at this time
The live camera from C Jamaica's YouTube channel shows that the Barbican era is fair. Nothing to do with bad weather taking place. People driving about, going about their business. People in their vehicles going about their business. And that should be the order of the evening into the night. The temperatures right now shows that we have 26 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay, 25 degrees Celsius in Kingston. And by about 4 a.m. on Thursday, on Tuesday, sorry, temperature should dip down to about 24 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay, 22 degrees Celsius in Kingston. Taking a look at the temperature forecast for tomorrow, this map from the GFS is valid for at and on Tuesday, which is actually 1pm on Tuesday. We see Jamaica for the most part embedded in the grey, so represents zero on the scale on the right. That's average temperatures. I know the average temperature for the month of November is around 88 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's converted to degrees Celsius that we use here in Jamaica. That's around 31.1 degrees Celsius. So that should be Jamaica's temperature forecast for Tuesday. And JPS, as you know, is still working hard to get people out west restored after the passage of major Hurricane Melissa. Well, nothing expected for us here in the east. No maintenance outage advisories. You know that when they have those maintenance outages can definitely make, you know, the heat feel even worse because we don't have our fan or our AC to cool us down. And I'm sure that's the case for those persons out west who don't have fun or AC to cool them down. So they definitely need these, the tips to beat the heat. And it stays here. Dress down, wear lightweight clothing and use sunscreen. Check on others, including children, elderly people with medical conditions and pets. Be cool, stay indoors and make use of fans and air conditioners. Avoid alcohol and caffeine as they can make dehydration worse. I limit non-essential strenuous activity during the hottest parts of the day. And I cannot stress enough the importance of staying hydrated throughout the day. Drink lots of water, eat if you're not thirsty and put away those sugar drinks and drink water instead. Taking a look at the dry ear map, we know that the dry ear is represented by what we see here on the key on the bottom. The yellows, the oranges, the reds, and the what is in those ears. We see a lot of dry ear across the South Asian Atlantic into the Caribbean, the Gulf, the northern portion of North Atlantic. We know that the dry ear is responsible for keeping the atmosphere stable, making it harder for it to rain. But that's definitely what we want more of right now. We don't want the moist air to bring us rainfall, especially for those persons out in western Jamaica who are without roads. The SAR around us for the next three days, so we're heading into November 25, November 26, and November 27. And as you can see here across the Caribbean, we should be in the clear. We have some slight SAR around us in the greens and the yellows pushing through the main development region, but clearly, the more it pushes westward, the more it dwindles down. And that's what we want more of because you know that when the SAR around us pushes through with all of the greens, yellows, oranges, and pinks, it can definitely cause hazy skies, not to mention trigger respiratory illnesses in some persons. So we're grateful that the SAR around us isn't really that significant these days at all. The wave forecast for tomorrow shows that the highest waves should be to the south of Jamaica, to the north of Colombia, to the north of Panama. That's where we have the dark blues into the purples into the pinks. That represents two up to three meter wave heights. And that's because of the strong east turley, if not east, northeasterly winds, averaging up to 20 to 25 knots in the yellows to the south of Jamaica, to the south of Hispaniola, to the north of Colombia and Panama. So it makes sense why the waves are highest to the south of us. Regarding the wave forecast for tomorrow, to the north of Poland, 1.2 meter wave height, to the north of St. Anne, 1.2 meter wave height, to the north of Hanover, 1 meter wave height, to the south of Westmoreland, 0 0.6 of a meter wave height, to the south of Clarendon, 0 0.9 of a meter wave height expected, while to the south of St. Anne, what do we have that's expected? 1.5 meter wave height. And uh, that is because of the winds that are expected tomorrow. We see more of an easterly flow, averaging maybe close to 20 knots. That's 12 knots right here to the north of Trinone. Definitely higher on the south coast, 16 knots to the south of St. Thomas, 17 knots to the south of Clarendon. And uh, actually, tomorrow doesn't really seem like it's going to be raining a lot at all. We still have that upper level wind coming in from the west, southwest. But look at the rainfall forecast maps. This map from the Euro and this map from the GFS are both valid for 3 p.m. And keep in mind that they are not showing much of anything for the morning. So for 3 p.m., the Euro has blues that mean rainfall across eastern, central, and western parishes. Maybe on the isolated shower side. The GFS has some of that across northern St. Andrews, southern St. Mary, northeastern St. Catherine, section of St. James. Definitely not a high signal for rainfall on Tuesday at all. Even the total accumulated precipitation forecast maps are in agreement that there is not going to be much rainfall. The Euro going up to 0 0.23 for an inch of rainfall. The GFS going up to 0 0.05 for an inch of rainfall. This is going to be the driest day in a long time for us. Whatever happens, we just have to take it. We're in the month of November. And in Clarendon, we usually receive 113 millimeters of rainfall this month. While in Westmoreland, we usually receive 105 millimeters of rainfall this month. And if you'd like to 
find out what your specific parish usually receives in terms of rainfall for the month of November or for the entire year, you can visit nomadseason.com and that website to show you that information. All right, so regarding what's going to be taking place over the next seven days, keep your eyes focused on the timestamp right here. That we go to the next one, John 68 hours. Keep your eyes focused on Jamaica right here. As we look for all of this that we see on the key on the right, that's the reds, the oranges, the yellows, and the greens represents inches of rainfall. So let's see what's going to be unfolding. So we just looked at Tuesday's forecast. Now it's time to look at Wednesday. 12Z on Wednesday is actually 7 a.m. We don't see much of anything expected across Jamaica at that time. Wednesday afternoon, isolated shows across central and western parishes. What does the GFS show? Wednesday morning, nothing just like the Euro. Wednesday afternoon, nothing at all. So Tuesday, Wednesday, definitely dry. Thursday morning, what do we see? Euro has some greens represent moisture across St. Anne into St. Mary. Then on Thursday afternoon, maybe some southern and western parishes. What does the GFS show? Thursday morning, nothing. Thursday afternoon, maybe some central and western parishes to that rainfall. On Friday morning, not really much of anything across Jamaica. Friday afternoon, maybe some rainfall across some western parishes. What does the GFS show? Friday morning, maybe some rainfall across the northern parishes. Friday afternoon, maybe some rainfall across the northern and southwestern parishes. What do we see on Saturday morning? On Saturday morning, maybe some rainfall on the north coast. On Saturday afternoon, maybe some rainfall across some eastern, southern, and western parishes. What does the GFS show for Saturday morning? Northern parishes did that rainfall. Saturday afternoon, rainfall across some northeastern, southern, and western parishes. So Saturday seems like it's definitely going to be the wettest day, and we've been seeing that trend since yesterday. So is it going to continue? We'll see. What do we see on Sunday morning into Monday? Sunday morning, we see rainfall to the south of us, rainfall across the eastern end. And then on Sunday afternoon, we see that rainfall across the eastern, central, and western parishes. And we're stopping it right here at the end of the one, John 68 hours. So this is valid from Monday, December 1. And we don't see anything across the island at that time. What does the GFS show? Sunday morning, rainfall across the north coast. Sunday afternoon, rainfall across the north coast, the southern and western ends. And we're going to be stopping it right here at the end of the one, John 68 hours as well. So this is valid for Monday, December 1 as well. And we're actually seeing some moisture across northern parishes. And we still need to make note or take note of the fact that the southwestern Caribbean, if not the southern Caribbean, is definitely going to be increasing in a lot of moisture. We see the dark greens into the yellows on the year of the GFS. Definitely a bit more robust to the rainfall down here. Very interesting times ahead. We even see... A pool of moisture right here to the northeast of the Lesser Antilles. Very interesting. We definitely have to pay close attention to see how all of this unfolds. Regarding the total accumulated precipitation for the next seven days, both maps right here from the Euro and the GFS are in agreement that the most rainfall should be wherever we have the dark reds into the purples and the pinks. That represents up to 2 into 5 inches of rainfall, even some of them getting up into the 6 to 10 inches range. We see that especially across the southern Windward Islands, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, intersection of Guyana, Venezuela, Colombia, the ABC Islands, sections of Panama into Costa Rica, eastern Nicaragua, Honduras into the Yucatan and Belize. Some of this rainfall could definitely trigger some amount of isolated flash flooding. And we're seeing it not only in the GFS here, but even on the Euro. While other areas that are shaded in the green, yellows, oranges, and reds should be getting another inch of rainfall for a majority of the Greater Antilles into the Lesser Antilles. Regarding Jamaica's rainfall totals for the next seven days, both maps right here from the Euro and the GFS have Jamaica shaded in the blues into the slight greens, especially on the northeastern side. That represents anywhere from a millimeter all the way to maybe 20 millimeters of rainfall. We'll see how it plays out. Very interesting though that the Euro is showing a lot more moisture across the water to the south of us. GFS not so much here but maybe farther south. We'll see how it actually plays out. And whatever happens I'll definitely be here to keep you posted. Regarding the weather we have up our satellite images here the visible. We can make out that flow of the low level clouds pushing in from the east if not the east northeast across much of the greater antilles into central america right here upper level winds blowing those cloud tops off from south america from southwest to northeast into the eastern caribbean regarding the doppler radar images though let us see what's happening down here near puerto rico not much, maybe some moisture to the south of Puerto Rico, to the north of Puerto Rico, and loading these images from earlier today. We saw where we had some rainfall across central to southwestern Puerto Rico, and regarding the, um, what is this, the Barbados radar, we can make out some rainfall 
Rest of the east of Barbados pushing westward, some rainfall to the south of there too. There's actually a lot more rainfall. But we have the Grenada and the Grenadines right in here. Not to mention some moisture just to the east and to the northeast of Trinidad and Tobago. A lot of moisture, moderate to heavy rainfall at that. Regarding the weather view of Doppler there, images, we can make out some moisture pushing through the ABC Islands. So the Yucatan, northern Guatemala into section of Belize, coastal areas of Honduras. And regarding where the rainfall is expected within the next 24 hours. Both maps right here from the year and the GFS are in agreement that the most rainfall over the next 24 hours from now until 10 p.m. on Tuesday should be wherever we have the reds into the yellows, into the oranges. We're talking about an inch of rainfall or less for portions of Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, section of Guyana the abc islands venezuela colombia panama costa rica nicaragua honduras into belize and the yucatan and we can clearly see that both the euro and the gfs malls are in agreement with that while other areas that are shaded in the green center the yellow that represents up to 0 0.2 of an inch of rainfall maybe up to 0 0.3 maybe 0 0.4 of an inch of rainfall like the bahamas section of cuba section of northern portion of the dominican republic eastern puerto rico the u.s and british virgin islands guadalupe dominica martinique those areas should be getting on less rainfall than the southern and western areas. Regarding what's happening here across the eastern Pacific, tropical cyclone activity is not expected during the next seven days. And this is the reason why nothing trying to develop across the eastern Pacific. Some moisture right here to the southeast of Hawaii that's being sheared from west to east. And it doesn't seem like anything is going to be acquiring the next name on the list, which is sunny at all. Regarding the Western Pacific side of things and the Indian Ocean side of things, we have a brand new tropical depression still actually across the Philippines. Yesterday we spoke of a code, was it a code orange or a code red? Either way, it was sitting there, a lot of deep conviction. Now it has upgraded to a tropical depression, now lashing the air with a lot of flood rains. Boy, they can't catch a break there in the Philippines. We are also still watching that code yellow right here. On the border of the Indian Ocean and the Western Pacific, they're affecting maybe Indonesia, Mal Malaysia. Correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm getting those countries wrong. And we're still watching tropical cyclone Fina right here across northern portions of Australia. Regarding tropical depression number 33. Right here, a lot of deep convection in and around the Philippines. They're getting nailed as we speak. As of right now, it's packing about 35 knot wind. You know that system that pack um, close to 30 three knot wind are classified well i think it's around 25 knot wind as it's packing right now considering that this is still the 24 but as you can see 35 45 55 65 is expected to increase in intensity the more west it pushes towards vietnam my goodness vietnam cannot catch up break they've been getting in on the storms and looks like they're gonna be getting in on another regarding tropical cyclone fina it has finally made landfall into the northern portion of australia we know that there are a lot of deserts here in the northern portion of australia but we're still gonna be getting some footage i'm sure by tomorrow we have a lot more footage coming out regarding the system as of right now it is packing 85 knot winds we know that systems that pack up anywhere from 84 to 95 knot winds are classified as category 2 hurricanes so it is definitely lashing northern portions of Australia as we speak. And whatever happens regarding the footage, I'll definitely be here to keep you posted if thought occurs. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching.